here. I will uh, breeze through this, stop, and we can take questions. So we can see that I've identified six routes for knowledge transfer. We know that there are Vedic records of migration to the West. For example, the Anu, Drahiu, and others. We know that after the Dhatharagniya battle and so on. We also know the Indus Valley civilization experienced 200 year of monsoon failure. We know Saraswati River had uh, dried up. All these things induced migration in 2000 BC. We have a lot of evidence for this. We also know the Mitannis, Hittites, Elamites, Canaanites, Babylonians, they were all affected by Indian knowledge systems. Suddenly in this time frame, we see works in these cultures that have got knowledge of Ayurveda, that have got knowledge of Indian mathematics, Indian astronomy, and other things. So it is the other way around, starting from here. We also see the Greek period, Mycenaean period. I gave you a story right now. That's from the Mycenaean period, 1000 BC. We know there was contact between Greeks and Indians. Travel to India, by Greek scholars, people like Pythagoras, Democritus, uh, Pyron, and others. So from 3000 BC to 300 BC, this is one knowledge transfer. After Alexander, 300 BC to 100 BCE, the Seleucid Empire, that formed a conduit between the Mediterranean world and the Indian world. And this formed a conduit for knowledge transfer. And then uh, uh, the Silk Route. Silk Route was an informal trade route between the Koreas, Japan, China, in the uh, Central Asia, all the way to Mediterranean lands, including India. And one example I gave is Boer Manuscript. Boer Manuscript is an Indian medical uh, text containing the Bela Samhita, containing Charaka Samhita, mentioning the Rishis, uh, various Parishara and other Rishis are mentioned there, talks about doshas. This Boer Manuscript was found in Xinjiang province on the trade route. The fact that Indian knowledge was the trade route is where I'm claiming that Silk Route provided a mechanism where Indian knowledge seeded the entire world, China, Southeast Asia, Middle East, 300 BC to the medieval period. Then during the Roman era, during the Roman era, there is a Periplus of Eritrean Sea is a document that we have. There is a port sailors document that says, where are the ports to trade with in India? So Roman sailors will come from Italy, Greece, Turkey, and other places. They'll cross the Mediterranean. At Alexandria, there's a land bridge. They'll cross this land bridge. Then again, the Red Sea, they come in this route and start trading in spices, ivory, metals, wine, gold, cloth, all these kind of things they were taking back, including drugs from India. This also formed a route for knowledge transfer. Muslim transmissions. We know that after 7-11, when Bin Qasim came to Sindh and uh, Pakistan and as well as this area, it became Islamic. They took Indian knowledge, translated Sanskrit texts into Persian, into Arabic, and they controlled a huge empire from Afghanistan, Persia, to Arabia, Egypt, into Morocco, Tunisia, all the way to Southern Spain. Southern Spain, Cordoba, these are all Islamic areas. So the Indian knowledge translated into Persian, translated into Arabic was injected everywhere. And from here, it was injected into Western Europe, into Christian Europe. And this uh, translation is then the next last slide over here, knowledge transmission. I'm talking about uh, European church travelers. We know about Jordanus of Catalani, and we know about uh, Marco Polo and others who came to India directly and took information to uh, Europe. We also know that Indian knowledge impacted the Greeks in very ancient periods of times, the Romans. But this knowledge was destroyed by Christians when uh, uh, Greece, uh, Roman, Roman Empire adopted Christianity, 325 current era. They burnt the pagan knowledge, the Emperor Theodosius, Emperor Constantine, they all burnt the pagan knowledge systems, libraries, everything was destroyed. But this knowledge lived on in Syria, Lebanon, and all these other places which later on became Islamic. So the Islamic people inherited this knowledge. They also destructively got knowledge from India and they became consolidators of uh, knowledge. And their greatest scientists in 10th century were people like Al-Hayatam, Al-Fazali, Al-Ghazali. They all had access to the Roman Greek works as well as Indian works compared to study and they proposed their own knowledge systems. It was in Baghdad House of Wisdom this is the greatest growth of knowledge in that time frame. This knowledge was injected into Spain in translation schools. On the Christian side of Spain, there was a translation school in Toledo, whose only job by the monastery was to translate Arabic text into Latin between 10th to 13th century. So one name that we know, Gerard of Cremona, he translated 87 texts from Latin, sorry, from Arabic into Latin. 
and those arabic texts contain sanskrit works sanskrit works converted into arabic into latin that is how the europeans got to learn about uh, indian knowledge systems and colonialists from 13th and 16th to 20th century portuguese dutch french uh, british portuguese were like the taliban of today they were not interested in knowledge they came to destroy convert and other rob and such things the dutch french and british they were after knowledge also so they uh, took a lot of indian knowledge systems so all this knowledge went to europe and uh, converted into latin has come back to us refined and removed the citation and today we have no idea how this european world is able to send spaceships to jupiter and to the moon to the sun and other places we think that these people have learned so much in the last 600 years in reality